Today we are going to discuss one of the possible malignancies seen in the head and neck, and that is chondrosarcoma. To give you a little background on this growth, chondrosarcoma is just a slow-growing malignant tumor made of abnormal cartilage-producing cells. It is the second most common primary bone malignancy, though it's still considered rare for you to see in practice. While the exact cause of chondrosarcoma is unknown, research has made potential connections to genetic components or outside sources, sources like radiation therapy. Chondrosarcoma is interesting because it can present in such variable ways, thus making it difficult to diagnose. A combination of clinical, histological, and radiographic findings are needed to retrieve a, def a definitive diagnosis. Additionally, it is difficult to treat as it is resistant to radiation and chemotherapy. The figure on the right shows an example of a chondrosarcoma where we see a unilateral intraoral swelling on the hard palate, but again, these can vary quite a bit in presentation. Chondrosarcomas are classified based on histological grade, origin of the lesion, as in primary or secondary, location of the bone, as in central or peripheral, and lastly, if there is an association with a syndrome. The majority of lesions are primary lesions, which means they arise on their own from normal cartilage cells, not from a pre-existing condition. Secondary lesions are more rare and are thought to be, to be a result of an underlying benign condition. These include endochondromas, multiple extosis, like osteochondromas, Olier disease, and Mifuchi syndrome. Most chondrosarcomas are of the conventional type histologically, which are low to intermediate grade tumors with minimal clinical activity and low metastatic potential. That which is not conventional falls within one of four histological subtypes. These include clear cell chondrosarcomas, mesenchymal chondrosarcomas, extraskeletal chondrosarcomas, and dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma. These vary in their typical location, histology, and prognosis. The figure on the right shows what conventional chondrosarcoma looks like and where you see the abnormal cartilage producing cells. Coming to clinical findings, we will discuss some of the common features of chondrosarcomas. Most often these neoplasm arise in middle-aged individuals, usually somewhere between the fourth and sixth decade of life. It is not common to see chondrosarcomas in individuals under 20 years of age, but there are documented cases in young people. More specifically, in the head and neck region, the average age of developing a chondrosarcoma is somewhere between 35 and 45 years. Although these malignant lesions seem to target older individuals, they are equally common among men and women. Chondrosarcomas can essentially arise in any bone, but they are especially common in the metaphysis of long bones. For instance, the most commonly involved locations include the pelvic girdle, ribs, humerus, tibia, and scapula. However, being a dentist, we are most concerned with lesions involving the head and neck area. When the maxilla is involved, the lesion is most commonly found in the anterior part of the mouth, and when the mandible is involved, lesions are most often in the posterior premolar molar region. Some believe this is because the lesions arise from remnants of embryonic cartilage precursors which give rise to nasal processes in the anterior part of the maxilla, as well as knuckles cartilage precursors that aid in the development of the posterior mandible. The most common locations to find chondrosarcomas in the head and neck region include the maxilla, base of skull, cervical vertebrae, nasal cavity, nasal septum, as well as the coronoid process, condylar process, and mandibular symphysis. That being said, these lesions can occur in any location. In the figure on the right, you can see a chondrosarcoma in the anterior mandible. The symptoms associated with chondrosarcomas depend mainly on location of the lesion as well as how long the lesion has been present. Early lesions will be present as asymptomat asymptomatic, whereas more mature lesions will be more painful. This suggests that the, that the pain progresses as the tumor grows over time and can usually be relieved with anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. Going along with that, the pain is constant and usually worsens at night. Other symptoms may include a feeling of localized pressure and swelling in the area of the growing mass, as you can see here in the picture. Headaches and neurologic deficits, depending on the location of the tumor, the mass could impinge on neurovascular bundles. Patients may also present with mobile teeth, malpositioned teeth due to the growing mass, buccal and lingual cortical expansion, which may lead to bone fracture, as well as a premature exfoliation of teeth.
A chondrosarcoma will usually present as a large lobulated mass on the bone that is affected or essentially a lump on physical examination. On average, lesions usually measure 4 centimeters or greater and can have a variable surface appearance form of translucent, blue-gray, or even white, indicating the presence of hyaline cartilage. On closer evaluation, there may be areas with cystic changes in myxoid or mucoid material around. Yellow to white chalky areas are common to see as well. These areas correspond to locations of calcium deposits indicating mineralization is taking place. Finally, soft tissue erosion could also be present depending on how long the lesion has been present. In the figure on the right, you can see a chondrosarcoma in the right posterior mandible showing expansion of both cortical plates. Radiographically, chondrosarcomas have a variable appearance. Chondrosarcomas can be solitary, multilocular, opaque, or have a variable density. The variable density seen in chondrosarcomas is due to calcification and ossification that takes place throughout the tumor. The presentation is often referred to as a moth-eaten radiolucency. In addition, a wide PDL space can be noted, but this is not a diagnostic feature of chondrosarcomas. The image on the left shows a multilocular chondrosarcoma of the posterior right mandible causing root resorption in a widening PDL on tooth number 30. The figure on the right shows a multi multifocal chondrosarcoma in the mandible. A shows a chondrosarcoma displaying a moth-eaten radiolucency, while B and C show a chondrosarcoma displaying a diffuse radiolucency. There are three primary differential diagnoses to consider when identifying a chondrosarcoma. These are osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and fibrous dysplasia. Some differences between a chondrosarcoma and a differential diagnosis include factors such as age, location, and radiographic appearance. A osteosarcoma can be described as a type of malignant bone cancer that causes Im immature bone to be produced. The most common location for osteosarcomas is in the knee, but very rarely it can occur in the jaw. Although the radiographic appearance can vary, osteosarcomas often appear as a heterogeneous bone mass as shown in the image here. Osteosarcomas are more common in teenagers and young adults, while chondrosarcomas occur more frequently in the 4th to 6th decade. A Ewing sarcoma can be described as a very rare bone cancer that arises inside the bone or the soft tissue around the bone. Unlike chondrosarcomas, Ewing sarcomas are known to be very painful and occur more often in young people, rarely after the age of 30. Bone destruction is a common result of this malignancy, which is demonstrated in this radiograph showing Ewing sarcoma of the jaws. In this scenario, the patient's cortical plates have been almost completely destroyed. The final differential diagnosis to consider is fibrous dysplasia. This disorder is caused by scar tissue developing in place of normal bone, causing expansion or weakness. Like the previous two malignancies, this dysplasia occurs more frequently in young people. It is caused by a genetic mutation on chromosome 20 and it is not inheritable. Fibrous dysplasia is generally asymptomatic and not painful. Radi radiographically, fibrous dysplasia may appear as a generalized opaque expansion like the lesion shown here. Increased fibrous tissue has expanded the right inferior border of the mandible. As for treatment options, complete surgical removal of the lesion is the primary treatment option. Removal of the bone with reconstruction is sometimes needed. Radiation is used as a supplemental treatment option or if the lesion is recurrent. There is some question as to how much radiation benefits treatment of chondrosarcomas, but most show it does decrease recurrence if used in conjunction with surgery. Chemotherapy is used occasionally, but it is typically not shown to be effective against chondrosarcomas. Recurrence is very high, making follow-up essential. Recurrence in the same location as the primary lesion is highly associated with death. The 5-10 to 10 year survival rate varies depending on which studies you look at, but is typically around 70-80% to 80 survival. This varies by the grade of the sarcoma. There are studies that show that the survival rate of chondrosarcoma of the head and neck has a slightly better survival rate than in other locations. Our references include the following.
Our image citations include the following.